Okay, so no joke, our custom Nerf blasters were on the Jimmy Kimmel Live show. We spent two weeks running 80 3D printers to print over 500 parts to build our most epic blaster build ever. They feature eight high-capacity gauntlet blasters sitting on top of four frame packs with dual shoulder cannons for that extra punch. Today we're going to show you not only how we built them, but how absolutely nothing went wrong. A week ago, I got a really strange email. Science Bob over at Jimmy Kimmel Live reached out to do a build. Science Bob does a lot of cool builds for the show. He previously did a ping pong ball blaster. It's like a backpack fed blaster. And they reached out to me because they wanted an Iron Man style gauntlet blaster. This kind of project was absolutely fascinating, of course. Um, we have our Jupiter blaster, which is a ball blaster. And then on top of that, I've got my proton pack design, which is a high capacity, high rate of fire feed system. The crazy part is that they needed this in three weeks. So I quickly sent off a bid, didn't get a lot of time to like really dive in, but ultimately the producers didn't immediately approve it and they wanted to see more. So I went back to doing what I like doing and that's making videos. I sent them over a pitch video and fortunately the job was approved. The problem now is that the bidding and pitch process ate up an entire week, so our three weeks are now down to two. Thankfully, I don't have to do this all alone. My print tech, Carrie, is gonna be running all the prints. My mod tech, Greg, is gonna be doing the majority of the soldering. Thanks, Greg. And as luck would have it, my buddy Tarek, our 3D designer, <laughs> happens to be visiting this Thursday, just four days into the project. We don't have any time to waste, so let's get going. So we're diving right into it here, and I'm trying to figure out the actual filament colors. Seeing as my filament supplier is local here in Vancouver, I'm gonna run over there and just get the color I need because I'm pretty sure they'll have something for me. And off to Protopasta. They're a really great group and I love working with them. It's been really fun to have a collaborator on this film and color situation. Hey, Alex. Hey. <laughs> Let's see what you got. We just like included a new gray. Oh yeah? It's like the most neutral gray. It's just good old gray. So I think we found it. We are looking at good old gray, which is literally right in the range of what I was looking for. So I think that's gonna do us. Awesome, thank you, Alex. <laughs> All right, got four rolls from Protopasta. We ended up with two different colors, so we've got some options. Time to get back to the warehouse and get printing. So we're basically at the end of our first day of work and we have got the majority of the prints running, at least all the ones that are gonna take any time. Greg and I have been sorting out electronics and we're getting pretty close to having nothing, basically. It's day one, but we have as much progress as we could possibly have in a single day. We are getting going on slicing and printing. We have a lot of printers, so things go pretty fast. So I'm essentially just uh, going through and loading up cards one at a time here and getting them ready to print, and then we'll get them over to the printing department. Hey, Carrie, I've got some prints for you. These are all the rest of the uh, gauntlet, gauntlet parts for the blaster. Um, we should probably do these approximately in order. Customer orders are first. This is more like hopefully tonight we can print some of this, but let's do customer stuff first. Hey, Greg, good morning. <laughs> Looks like you're already doing what we need to do today. Greg is gonna build up the actual proton pack feed system. So he's starting the wiring on that, getting those going. And then we'll start putting things actually together as we get everything printed. And I'm gonna get back to designing. Leave it to Tarek to over-engineer something. So this whole system, the gauntlet needs a button press and Tarek sent me this. This is like the first draft that he came up with. But it, uh, you can't see the seam at all, but you can take it apart to access wiring a different kind of switch. And I think the switch he has must need to be inserted this way, but the switch I need actually needs to go in from the top. So got to send him some notes and dimensions on this and figure out the actual size on these switches to make sure we get it right. We have the issue with the print. So what's happening is the uh, swivel is impacting our arm mount. Oh no. So. Our problem we have here is we got rid of an extra mount that's in the middle of this, these, these parts. We didn't need that extra height, but then in doing so, we've caused a collision we didn't, we didn't foresee when putting these two parts together. So now we're gonna have to cut some out of this part in the 3D model to make that work. I'm here in the print farm and we are running prints like crazy. Uh, the way the, this project timed out was actually really tough. Uh, I just talked to my print tech, Carrie, and uh, one of the challenging things that happened here is that 
We basically started this project on a Monday. We don't work weekends anymore. I like for the team to have off and I like to have off with my family. So we essentially have to take care of all of the orders that came in Saturday, Sunday, Monday, or even Friday night on a Monday and on a Tuesday. And so we're here on Tuesday now and there's still weekend orders that we're catching up on. And then at the simultaneously, I'm throwing all this stuff for the, the build on, but I think we're gonna get it done. We've got a lot of prints running. We're about halfway through all of the printing we need to do, as far as I can tell, but we will have some reprints and a few things here and there. So it's gonna be tight, but uh, we'll get it printed as fast as we can. You never can have enough printers. It doesn't matter. We've got 80 here and I still want more. So we've got this base plate for the Proton Pack. And one of the things about the Proton Pack is it doesn't currently have an on off switch because it's got a self timeout function. We didn't want people to leave the batteries in here, but for being used on stage, they definitely need a master on off. My plan is to put this little guy here, just make a recessed hole that can't be activated by accident. So what I'm gonna do is I've actually just spliced this up and I'll only print this little sample piece to make sure the fit's okay. So yeah, that actually printed fine. I wasn't sure about the overhangs on the plastic there, but uh, I've got my switch here. We'll just shove this in. Oh, I love when things just work on the first try. Uh, I think I'm gonna change the tolerance. There's like a little bit more slop there. It could be a little tighter, but that'll totally work. Can't get activated by accident. I love it when things go this smoothly. I can't say the same for the motor braking and the time delay circuit. So we've got this problem we're trying to figure out and that's, this blaster needs both a motor braking circuit to slow down the motor after it stops firing so it doesn't push a ball into the flywheels while they're not spinning. It also needs a delay circuit so the flywheels can get fully up to speed before firing. We thought we'd solve that with a delay circuit, but now we're realizing, uh, Greg figured out that after you hook it up, you have residual generated current from the motors that's basically continues to run the pusher. So the braking goes away. <laughs> Yeah, and I can see it because it. <laughs> I guess I'll steal these glasses. Yeah, that did nothing. Let me. There's a there's a solution. There's a solution I'm missing here. So Greg and I have been trying to figure out this issue with our motor braking circuit not working, and I for the life of me could not figure it out. I'm not an electrical engineer. I don't have that background. So I gave a quick call to my buddy James and he saved the day. We had to add a diode and switch how the MOSFET was being controlled. And now we have exactly what we need. We should be good to actually get this going. It's day five. I picked up Tarek almost midnight last night at the airport. So he's here to uh, help us figure some things out. I think today is all about finalizing a lot of these little designs. I've got to do the bracket for the Frame pack, you're gonna work on wiring and, and just solder, solder, solder. Uh, the next is the battery door compartment to hold the um, relay. Cool, I think we get to it because we gotta get these prints running if we wanna see a, another sample today before another prototype today. Awesome, that might even be more appealing. You'd have this on your hand and then essentially, because this is connected to your wrist, you, you'd be able to open your hand and then you could reach down to like a pull tab that would fire one side and then the other. And I'm thinking two, two on each side. So they'd be kind of sitting up at that level. Yeah. They're... <laughs> so I am trying to solve the problem of mounting these onto the pack. Uh, I was pretty tired yesterday, but I whipped up a really, really quick little bracket here. It essentially attaches to the additional, the original pack and lets us rotate this slightly so it'll work for both sides. Got to get these done going because I want this done by the end of the day. So I'm going to get back to figuring out a few sizing changes and we should be good to go. Uh, um, God, I, I uh, reprinted something and didn't realize that the two designs I had were not connected. So the design parameters, the sizing didn't change. So I basically waited for this print for nothing. So it's just like one of the many things that happens uh, with, with design is like, you think you got everything, but small little mistakes pop up, especially if you're trying to work quickly. The general idea is this will pop on here. Or did I ruin that too? Okay, I made that too snug now. <laughs> okay, we're gonna print that again. So it is Saturday. That makes this, I believe, day six, as far as our operation goes. 
and I am here with Tarek. It's just Tarek and I here today running the printers and we are literally running basically all 80 printers here behind me and it's uh, going to be tight. We have kind of a stretch goal of adding these shoulder mounted cannons to the build and that's taking a little bit longer because it's 16 units to print for the four packs, three for the actual deliverable and then one for a backup. It's going to be close, but I think we can get it. On guard. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's Tuesday. Thank you, everybody, for all your work in the last week. We're in a pretty good spot, I think. We're wrapping things, most of the project up today, but our goal is to ship all of these on Monday morning. Greg and Luke are using that big island back there for prepping everything for the Jimmy Kimmel project. So anything prep related, let's just do elsewhere so that they can have that clear table. I think that's been mentioned already, but just a reminder in the meeting. Sourcing has been one of the hardest things with this, this uh, job because we only have two weeks. One of the things we needed to figure out was a frame pack that was sturdy enough. I went to Sportsman's Warehouse in a sporting goods store, and I also called around to a few military sur surplus stores, but we really couldn't find the kind of pack we wanted. So we ended up buying this one off Amazon. At first I didn't, I didn't love it, but then uh, we ended up, we took this bra top bracket up off and we took the cargo plate off. So it's kind of a bare frame. Now we just need to get Three more of them. That pack's low, right? This pack does not have enough current. Oh, it's that one. Yeah, that's why I stole a spot. So, let's see pusher, we can hear flywheels, all that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Finally. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, so let's close that one up. We'll uh, share that with a client today. I'm just gonna load it up and actually test fire. Yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah. Greg has got all the wiring kind of external here. We're waiting on some buttons, but we, <laughs> we've got it all wired up. Everything's here. So we're just going to test our single button operation whenever you're ready. Try a few like small bursts. Not bad. It's pretty, pretty snappy. I'll get them all hooked up to the button so I can tune in the um, delay. And then that way all we'll have to do is wire them up and then just give them a test fire. Nice. We're getting there. Thanks, Craig. So we had a minor setback. I was going to use these little blasters we have called uh, Proud Papa. They're mountable blasters that shoot a variety of ammo, but it would look really cool to do Mega XL because they are much larger. They'll play on screen and when they fly through the air, they whistle. But then I printed all that that we're not gonna use. We took over all the printers. We had to basically print all weekend long, even while the game was running. And now we have um, our bigger version, which is Mighty Mama. The plan here is to mount two of these to each side of the pack, just like this. I uh, designed a little custom bracket here. Really, really simple, but it should do the job. And then I've designed a little pair, pair, uh, pull cord, rather, that'll go through here. And the idea is that you'll be able to fire both on one side at the same time. That kind of thing. So it should be, it'll fire both when I've got them linked up and you'll have one on either side. So I'm gonna put two more on this first pack and uh, get the wiring, the cords figured out and make sure this works. This is one of the issues with, we're gonna get customers that are gonna ask us if they can buy this. And the answer is flat out, not right now, <laughs> no. Because none of the stuff that we've done here is production ready. It's 
done as quickly as we can, as best we can, but not ready to be efficiently assembled and put together. So Carrie right now is struggling doing the hard job of actually getting these packs mounted up because it's kind of a funky, funky space. I'm trying to figure out a new addition. The show asked us if we could increase the ammo capacity because they're a little concerned that they, the three of them on stage might be having too much fun. <laughs> right now, the base capacity that we've got here you can run both of these for 30 seconds straight. We're gonna make a coupler that basically you can screw a second pack on top of the first one. You could double the capacity. We also ordered some half size containers if they wanna mix up the, the size. And I've gotta either make a coupler, I've done this in the past where I cut this out and glue them together, or I can 3D print it. I think we glue it. I think we're gonna cut and glue. I'm just sanding sanding this a little bit so the hot glue has more surface area to grip on. That should do it. Now to do six more. This is a purple and, what color? Mighty Mama is this getting? Did I screw this up? How did we get the color scheme? How did I get this wrong? Tarek and I must have... Okay, so we have... Oh, I thought we were done printing. <laughs> we have... <laughs> we're never done printing. You see what's happening here? I do. Swap, really swap two of them. I'm gonna go get the prints ready for two of those and then four of the arms. So the arms I had you install are gonna get re swapped as well. Today we're finally putting everything together. We're assembling the final packs before our demo day and before we ship the blasters out. <laughs> I'd say nice work, Greg. <laughs> We're gonna shoot them at daddy. Does that sound fun? Do you wanna see them all shot at daddy? No? What do you got there? Yeah. Do you wanna play, run around and play? Play. Play. <laughs> okay. Be very gentle with everything you guys. What you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna, I'm gonna kinda of set you up to get strapped in. So let go of this. Just, you just worry about the backpack for a second. Okay. You can step forward, bring the full weight on yourself. Okay, get your belt strap on, and then there's a cross strap across the chest. I think just, you can step away, yep. If you've got the straps on your shoulders, you're good. It's not that heavy. Okay, anybody that's loaded, go over to receiving, and just mind the corners as you go around things, because there's lots of stuff to snag on. After 12 long days of building, we are finally, finally here. My team worked really, really hard the last two weeks, those that were involved directly in the project and those who weren't. So the ones that happen to be here today are going to do a test fire of the blaster. Each of my four team members has two packs on their back. Each one fires 15 rounds a second. That's a total of 120 rounds per second coming at me. And I'm gonna let them unload the entire capacity of the hopper, about 400 apiece, 1600 rounds. Definitely gonna need some eye protection. I'm ready to get hosed. All right, three, two, one, fire!
Oh my gosh. The demo day and final testing was a complete success without any issues. Finally, we carefully packed up the blasters to ship them down. We did have a little issue with the boxes, but fortunately one of our team members, Jess, saved the day with some boxes from home. The production thankfully flew me down to support during the show. A huge thank you to Science Bob and the entire team at Jimmy Kimmel. You were all a pleasure to work with and I would love to be back anytime. The trip was a complete crazy blur, but unfortunately during the re rehearsal, we did have an issue where one of the motors fried. I ended up doing a repair last minute and replaced both sets of flywheel motors before the actual final on stage. A huge thank you to John and Nova for letting me uh, not only take a look at the prop shop, but use your space to uh, work on these repairs. We did have the same issue on stage during the final taping, but the team took it in stride and the whole segment really worked well despite it. We're now certain that this was caused by too short of a delay time on the pusher motor, but ultimately when you're only given two weeks to build, you only have so much time to test such a complex project with so many moving pieces and there are bound to be some bumps along the way. Despite working in the filmmaking industry for 13 years, working behind the scenes on a live TV show was a completely different experience. I enjoyed it so much and I did film a little video here and there. I'm gonna do a completely separate, maybe five to eight minute video. So do subscribe down below to see that video in the future. On that note, thank you so much for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, this is definitely one of our longer videos. We don't make a lot of behind the scenes videos like this because these videos take a ton of time. If I had to estimate, I'm sure Perry spent 10 times as long on this video as any other video we generally do. Please leave us a comment down below, hit that like button, do subscribe, and let Perry and I know that you enjoyed this kind of content, and we'll do more of this in the future. I really had a fun time working on this larger build, and I hope we can do it again soon. Until next time, I'm out of darts.